what's going on again uh, coming at you with another video uh, and in this video what we will be doing is setting up a pause menu uh, for our player character to jump back either to our menu quit the game or just directly resume the game uh, so if you haven't checked out the menu video which is uh, you know where I am right now we have this uh, main menu set up you may want to do that just so you have a menu map uh, to jump to uh, and then reload your level uh, it's not very long, so it should be pretty easy to follow that. Uh, but for this one, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to be in my third-person example map. You can be in whatever project. Uh, and I'm just going to create a new file next to my menu. Uh, and this is just going to be my pause stuff. Pause. I'll just call it pause UI. Maybe we'll have some other graphics later. Uh, so in here, we're just going to open that up. And just like our menu or any other widget, we're going to right-click create a user interface widget blueprint uh, and I'm just going to call this my pause menu widget uh, awesome so let's just open that up really quickly uh, if you haven't seen it yet this is UMG this is Unreal Motion Graphics this is how you set up uh, everything UI pretty much it's awesome uh, so first thing I'm going to do is just drag a button into our canvas panel uh, and then just drag some text on top of that uh, and this first one is just going to be our resume button I'm just going to rename this to resume button and then this text I'm going to also rename to resume text uh, and again I just do this because I just love being organized so I'm going to set the actual text before I forget anything to the word resume I guess you could use unpause uh, and I'm just going to center this out pretty easily uh, if you want a quick way to center it you can just use this anchors uh, rollout in the details section we'll snap that to it or it'll snap that to the center and then your uh, position X and Y will be based off of that. That way you're not trying to guess that it's oh, maybe 860 or something. So uh, if you want to snap that there. Uh, and all this does is it just keeps it from clipping the top right now. So that's good. Uh, if you're drawing in the middle, you should be safe from clipping to either the left or right unless you're on a very strange resolution screen. Uh, so let's just add some mouse over really quickly to this. So I'm just going to go to my appearance rollout, set some styles. Uh, normal, I'll just make a background of uh, light blue, maybe. Uh, and then when I hover over this, I'm going to set this tint to, oh, uh, maybe. Fantastic. Uh, and then when we actually press it to, uh, and then we can change our text color if we want to in this appearance rollout uh, under color and opacity. Oops, if you're on your button, uh, you can do it under appearance also. You don't have to actually click on the text. Do it and just change this color and opacity. And you'll see it changes your text color just like that. So something that's going to read well on all those is probably just going to be white. So I'll leave that unchanged. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and duplicate this a couple times. Uh, Control V is not working. There we go. And so I'm going to have my resume button, I'm going to have my quit to menu button, and then I'm going to have another one that's going to be a exit to desktop. Uh, and I'm going to kind of give that some spacing from the other two to not frustrate anyone. First thing, this is going to be my quit menu button. So I'm going to say menu quit and button. And then text, menu text. And this other button uh, is going to be like quit desktop and then button. And then this text is just going to be, I guess, quit desktop text. Uh, all right, so now we've got that. Let's actually change this text so we don't have three resume buttons and no one knows what the hell is going on. So let's just say this is exit to menu. Oh, it all fits. Awesome. And this one will be just quit and then to desktop. And that ooh, barely fits. That's okay. We'll leave that right there. We won't resize too much. Uh, so now that we've got this, let's actually bind some functionality to these. And this is going to be a little bit more involved than a menu button will be because I want to actually handle this inside of our player controller. Uh, so to do that, we're going to need to go into this third person uh, player controller. Oh, we don't have one. It's even better. Uh, so let's actually just right click, create a new blueprint class, and we're going to make a player controller. And I'm just going to call this, in keeping with their naming convention, third person, and then I'll just call it PC. 
and that'll handle all of our drawing and our mouse toggling and all of our input for us. Uh, so once we've got that created, let's open up our game mode and set our player controller to use this third person PC. And then we'll hit compile and save. And if it doesn't look like this, it may look like the default blueprint editor. You can set that over in these details also. So same exact same thing, just a different look. Uh, so make sure we set that correctly. Now on our third person PC, which we've just created, uh, we need to open that up, go to our event graph and actually draw this pause menu widget. Uh, so we have this begin play event and off of this, I'm just going to use my create widget function uh, for the class. I'm going to do my pause menu widget. Uh, and then off this return value, promote to variable, call this pause widget reference. Uh, and unlike our menu, we are not going to add this to viewport immediately. We're going to do that on a bind, uh, which is not going to be escape because that will quit the editor for us. Uh, so all we, not, all we wanted was a reference to this pause menu to be drawn when we say. So to actually do that, I'm just going to use uh, the K press. I don't know why, that's just my go-to. Uh, so any key binding you can use here, or if you want to set one up properly through the project settings and inputs, you can. Uh, just make sure you're calling that here. Uh, and once we have this k-press, we want to actually add to viewport. So we're going to look for that add to uh, viewport. And since I don't see it, let's drag out a reference to this widget first. And there it is. Could have forced got that by unchecking context sensitive, but the editor's trying to help us out a little bit. Remember, get a reference to this. We're going to add this to the viewport on our K press. Uh, and now I'm going to set up all the functionality we're going to need in here to toggle it, go back to our main menu, and then quit to desktop. Uh, so in here, I'm just going to create a new custom event. Uh, and this is going to be the resume game. And then you just resume game event, whatever you want to call this. This will be the resume game function. Uh, so what we want to do on this resume is we want to unpause the game, which you'll see how we do that in a second, and we want to remove this from viewport. So I'm just going to get a quick copy paste of this. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is actually called remove from parent. So uh, we want to do that node. That will essentially toggle it off our screen. Uh, and just because I know there's a couple things we're going to add later on, like show mouse cursor and focus and all that. Uh, so on this resume game, remove from parent is happening. Uh, we're going to use a node called set game paused. This is probably the node everyone's watching this video for. So this is how you pause and unpause your game is set game paused. We're going to set that to false since this is our resume functionality. Uh, and then also because I know uh, earlier on we're going to show our mouse cursor. So we're going to drag off uh, and we're going to do something called set show mouse cursor. And where we're getting this variable from uh, this is actually a default value in our player controller. So if you click on this third person self up here, uh, you'll see there's already a built in variable called show mouse cursor. If we check it, we'll have it in the game. Uh, but gameplay, unless you're doing a point and click or some type of mouse control movement, you probably would not have this on by default. Uh, so we're setting show our mouse cursor, we're turning it to false on resume. Uh, we'll set it to true off of this K press in a second. Uh, so set game pause, false, toggling show mouse cursor. Uh, turning off our widget. I think that's all we need to handle there. And then, so when we actually press this, we're adding this pause menu to our viewport. Uh, I'm just going to copy this set game pause node and our set show mouse cursor, and we're going to drag those in. Uh, set pause to true, so that'll essentially pause the background of our gameplay. Show mouse cursor. Uh, boom. Uh, and that'll pop up our mouse cursor on the screen. And oh, a couple more nodes we're going to need to add. Uh, and if we don't add them, you'll see why in a second. Uh, so on this K press, we're going to want to use something called set uh, input mode. And then we want to use UI only. And I'll explain the difference of all these modes in a second. And even though we are in the player controller, we do need to get a reference to our player controller. Uh, you could just get self if you want, and that'll work just fine for the target. Uh, and you also need a reference to the widget that we're drawing on the screen if we want to be able to click on it right away. Uh, and what this will do is if we don't have this node, we'll click on the screen. Uh, you'll have to click on the screen to focus the widget before you can press the button. So you'll essentially have a double click before your button does anything. It's kind of annoying. Uh, and then on the resume, we want to make sure we're actually setting this input back to game. So we want set input mode 
uh, and then game only. What that'll do is I'll just make sure we have our, uh, and I'm just gonna get a copy of this player controller. I'll make sure we have our functionality back and it's not looking for UI input. Uh, now for the set game mode UI only, uh, there is another node called set input game and UI. Uh, and what this does is uh, it looks for input if you use it. It looks for something when you mouse press or if you press a button, it looks for an event handled by the UI first. So if there's nothing in the UI that'll handle it, it will go back into your game mode and be like, oh, you're still trying to play the game we see because there's no uh, widget trying to handle anything. Uh, so there is a time and place for it. If you have a menu on top of uh, your gameplay that's clickable, you'd want to use this game mode uh, because it just lets UI handle things before the game tries to. Uh, so things like maybe a MOBA interface where you have buttons to click and gameplay to interact with. So uh, That's the difference between all of those nodes. Now that we've got that set and these are getting drawn, uh, let's actually give this a test and see what's popping up for us. So we're gonna hit this play button and I'm just gonna press K. All right, awesome. Our mouse overs are working, everything's happening. Uh, our resume button still doesn't do anything because we haven't found that yet. Uh, but everything is good, the game is pausing. Uh, if you can't hit escape out of this because the game mode's not focusing escape, uh, you can hit the tilde key and then type exit and that will snap you back to your editor. Uh, so now let's bind that UI button to that resume function. Go back in our pause menu, let's open up our pause menu widget. Uh, let's find our resume button. And I'm gonna go to my on-clicked events at the bottom of details, add one, um, leave that tick event. Uh, and once we have this resume button, uh, I'm just going to do a quick cast to our player controller since we're the only one. I'm not gonna worry about anything like that. So I'm just going to do a quick get player controller. Uh, and then I'm just gonna drag off this, do a cast to, and then make sure we're using our third person PC or whatever player controller you're setting this up for. So make sure that player controller is what you're casting to. Uh, and then this is where we're going to actually call our resume game function through our button. Uh, so once we've got that, now we should be able to compile, save, and if we hit play, click resume, uh, our mouse cursor goes away, and we have that super awesome resume functionality. So, sweet. Now let's actually bind the other two buttons, and that should wrap this up. Uh, so for our exit to menu, uh, like I said at the start of this video, you're going to need a map to exit to. Uh, so I'm just going to go to add on clicked event, and I'm just going to straight up use open level. Boom, and the level name I'm going to use is my menu map. Uh, hit compile, save, that's going to work. And then I'm going to go back, oops, to my designer, click on my quit to desktop button, add a click event for that. Uh, and if you really want to get technical, you could add another widget or some more widgets in here to pop up and say, are you sure you want to quit to desktop, all that jazz. Uh, but I'm not gonna worry about it. We're just gonna go straight to the quit game function, uh, compile and save that. Now we can hit this play button, bring up our pause menu. If we hit exit to menu, uh, you'll see it, boom, focuses our main menu for us. We hit new game. Aha, small bug encounter. So we'll fix that in our player controller also. Uh, but it exited to menu correctly. Let's test that quit to desktop button. Boom, awesome. I noticed that small bug that happened. Uh, what did happen is we're exiting to our main menu. But when we hit K, we're setting our game mode to UI only, which is fine. Except when we come back, it's still stuck in UI only, so the game doesn't know how to handle our input right now. Uh, so the easiest way to combat that is just in our third-person controller, uh, right at the start of begin play, unless you have a different initialization, is just set game mode, or set input mode, sorry, to game only. Uh, and then I'm just gonna get a target to self really quickly. Or you use get player controller like we've been doing. It's perfectly fine. Uh, and what that'll do is that'll just make sure that when we go back to our menu and hit new game, uh, we can immediately start playing again. So that'll prevent any weird UI issues from happening or getting stuck like we were. Uh, so that's it. That wraps up the pause menu uh, to our main menu that we set up last video. And I will see you guys in the next video.